Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave. We are post Silicon. Silicon happened this weekend and it, I, I couldn't be happier. It was amazing. It was amazing. Um, but that's, that's, that's uh, not the subject of this video. The subject of this video is that it's, that I'm back in the cave. It's a couple days after Silicon. I took yesterday off to do some domestic duties because that felt good. Like, it's funny, coming home from being at such a public-facing event, I really needed to nest a bit in my house. So I did laundry all day and pressure washed my side. Well, I did all these weird domestic things that were really, like, satisfying. Uh, not that these are things I don't do on any given weekend, but, like, it felt good to concentrate yesterday on that. Anyway, I was thinking today, of like, what can I get off my list? What can I take off my list? And then I remember that later this month, I'm embarking on a um, on a final detailing of uh, a hand and carbonite project, and what you say you already have a hand and carbonite. There we go. My head's behind the light. There we go. Um, yes, I do have a hand and carbonite. Should I say Han? Han and carbonite. That is an elusive concept. Carbonite. Uh, I bought it many years ago on uh, Craigslist or the RPF. I can't quite remember which. Um, and look, it's beautiful. The casting is, it's great. The rest of it, it's, you can see it's a little flippy floppy, right? It's a little, you can see up there at the top where our hand, that's that top edge there. It's just, it's not beautiful. Um, so my friend Todd Blatt uh, makes a finishing kit for this. Uh, including the outer frame and all the Volvo dash panels, all that's going to be talked about in the, another video. However, what I want to do today is get this guy off the wall and get him into a new frame. Yeah, I'm going to cut up an elusive concept, Son and Carbonite, and put it in a new frame. I know this is sort of blasphemous, but I really... And then the old one's... The new one is going to go right back here. Uh, but you're going to get to see me do a little shop infrastructure here because uh, I'm alone. And that thing's got to come down here and lay down here. And yeah, it's going to be a thing. Oh. oh, I did have acrylic medium. I see what I did. Oh, we're free. Okay, good, good. Come, that's it. Oh my God, I'm gonna be so dusty. Oh. Hi, buddy. Been a while. I might be thinking the same thing as you were thinking. You were like, wait a minute, he climbed all the way up and untied, that that was hanging from a knot for 10 years that I untied with one hand? How safe of a knot is that? Well, I'm here to tell you it's a very safe knot. It's a trucker's hitch and it's self-hitching. As long as it was under pressure, it was never gonna let go. And it didn't. But the moment I took pressure off with the mechanical advantage of a block and fall, of which that is, and that's my shorty block and fall. I've got some longer ones. Uh, it's just a mechanical advantage uh, running through several pulleys to give me a little more. That's how I've hung most of the stuff in here. I actually hung with a better rope. I hung a 600 pound mill where the drill press used to be. Um, yeah, I know, I don't like asking for help. It's a weird thing I have moving stuff around my cave. It's not that I don't ask for help. It's that I don't, it doesn't occur to me a lot of the time. So I'm used to doing this stuff by myself.
Everything is pretty good. Just gotta fill that gap. Here's the thing I noticed. The fiberglass and the wooden frame are vastly different structural members and trying to get them to play nicely with each other, I still notice a lot of flex between them and that's gonna be problematic when I put on the Bondo and the paint because it means that every time I move it around, those two things are gonna move and paint could crack. So I'm gonna stabilize the whole thing with some nine ounce fiberglass cloth and epoxy resin. And basically that's just gonna tie the whole relationship together while keeping it real light. So uh, I am now mixing some Bondo to deal with the seam all the way around the thing. Uh, it's not officially Bondo. Oh, it is officially Bondo. How about that? Just a body filler, a uh, polyester-based body filler. Anyone will do. I usually throw out my stir stick because it's often got some material right on the edge of it. And we'll just uh, go through and fill some seams. The amount of hardener is super forgiving with body filler. The redder you get it, the faster it kicks, that's for sure. I'm adding some scraped Bondo actually to more parts of it just to kind of make the texture a little matchy because I'm going to end up with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know I did a lot of finishing of this off camera. Uh, I apologize for that. I, it was just, it's been one of those weeks. I needed to do it, but... Han is ready for his parts, and the parts are actually coming from my friend Todd Blatt's site, uh, custom3dstuff.com. Todd sells both the MDF uh, laser cut, CNC router cut, CNC router cut kit that makes the box for Han, and he also sells all of the injection molded Volvo parts and little rings and switches and greeblies and lights and electronics to dress up all eight of the panels that go up, four on each side of the Han and Carbonite. And Todd and I are gonna spend the next couple of days installing all of this, and then he goes back up into the blank spot. Look, the block and fall is already ready. It's already ready for his ascent. Okay, um, I am going to shoot this on two iPhones, so I'm gonna go slate the other one as a master shot, and we'll get started. We need to drill holes through this. That match that. So on one hole, it's just two. On one panel, it's just two. Right. On the other six, it's three holes. So this plate has three. Oh, so I can use them as a drill yeah, guy. Yeah, And okay. then on the hero panel, we don't drill anything. Okay. And the one that we drill two holes, this tab gets cut off. All right, I'll start with that one. This is panel two? Yeah. Great. These screws, these bolts here have three different heads. Yeah, I noticed that, that you have flat heads, cap heads, pan heads. That's the way it is. It's amazing. So uh, these originally were... Yeah, what are those? Heat sinks. So this is this is the one with two holes, right? Nope. You're holding, I'm holding it, two yeah. holes. And that's panel, panel two? two? Yeah. So this is the... Yeah. There you go. 
go. And then we'll call this three through seven, three through eight. Yep. Six. Well, forever people were calling them U clips because they're like shaped like a U. Yeah. And, and you had those made. Yeah, everything here is made. Nothing's like a found That's part. That's far out because that one definitely looks like the most, that totally looks like a found part. Yeah. So they were heat sinks. Right. And not me, but somebody else on the replica platform found the company that manufactured the heat sinks. Yeah. And said, we want to, you know, order more. We need yeah. To, we need this particular one. And they say, sure, we can do that for you. Minimum order quantity, one million. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, we don't need that many. So, um, I'm, I had a mold made where they have a block of steel and they first punch out the rectangle and then right. fold it over the block over and over. Amazing. The knurled knobs. So I have drawings, we can double check. I think these need to be updated. Okay. But in my mind, they're 14 and a half diameter, 15 tall and 17 tall. 15 oh. millimeters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> How to Yeah, no. So I'm going to do a neural on the stuff that I have. And then if you'll get me the numbers, I'll make the cutoffs. Oh. And the best part about knurling right now is that I have a new knurler. <laughs> I have a new knurling machine. So let me show it to you. Um, normally... When you are doing something called a, this is a knurl. This is a knurling pattern. It's a diamond pattern. And you can knurl straight. You can knurl fine diamond pattern. This is a heavy diamond pattern. And when you want to do this, normally you actually take a wheel with this, like this, a hardened steel wheel. And you, I know this sounds crazy, but you literally like push it into the work. Like you push it really hard. And this is hard on lathes. Lathes don't like this. The spindle, I mean, this lathe is fine. It's a big fat tool room lathe, but like, you know, if you're working on a shear line, that's not how you want to do it. Enter the clamp knurler. And there are versions of this you could buy and they work great. The $25 version of this on Amazon totally works fine. I use it to do the knurl on my lightsaber, which I consider like one of the best knurls I've ever done. Uh, so we're about to use the clamp knurler here and you get to see it in all its glory. So it clamps into one of my quick release lathe carriages there, and then we bring it over to the work. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. Now I slowly clamp down on this. And then I add some oil. Nice and slow. If you stop it, you can see I got a really nice diamond knurl there. See that? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And then I let it go real slow. And the best part about it, once it's locked in, I can stop it and inspect it and make sure I like it. Continue on. What about like traveling this way? How does it, it know like how far to go? For the Once it's locked into the diamonds, it's just going to keep on pushing that pattern. So it's self-guiding. There's also this whole thing around knurling about mathematically not double crossing your diamonds. And the answer is you don't have to worry about that math. If you clamp hard enough, it finds its way almost no matter what in my experience. So there's two schools, and one of them knows that it's a lot easier than the other yeah. school. Um, and again, we can just take a look, and yeah, it's making a really nice diamond. And then we'll throw that on the polishing. I'll do a little bit of uh, a little scotch bright, which will take down the, 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 the tips a little bit, and then on the polishing wheel, it'll be beautiful. And I always go a little bit farther than I think I need to. And I've never, uh, I never mind having extra neural draw stock around. Let me undo that, back it up. And there's our neural. Looks amazing, also way easier than I thought. It is, uh, with this, it becomes a almost trivial exercise. And literally machinists talk about neuraling as a dark art. <laughs> it's like, you know, really everyone has their own approach to it and it's hard to get right. 
so the measurements, what? Uh, height is 14, is 15 and 17. 15 and 17. But okay. we got to drill a hole. Down yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to cut them. To, I'm going to round both ends, cut them, and then I'll turn them around and drill the holes in the set screws. Okay. Panel has the handles. Yeah. And we have to widen these holes. I turned it. Oh, great. We have to widen the holes to drop these in. Oh, excellent. And that's like that easy. I have cut out the knurled knobs. I have added in a set screw hole and I'm adding in the set screw right now. There it goes. And that goes in this little schmageggy. There you go. Tighten you up. Oh, I know these are fatter than the real ones. I want to see them from a distance. There you go. Awesome. Much better. Oh, right. And once you get that, I can put the knobs in there. Yeah. So this is the first time using the new system. Okay. So it used to be I was using like epoxy sculpts to kind of hold those the, right. the knobs in place. And like, it was really messy. And this time it should. Maybe we'll get a mechanical connection. <laughs> um, part of the blinky lights are uh, this guy and this guy who are currently black and I'm going to paint them with a Tamiya blue. I'm going to mask them off first. So these are all 3D printed Greeblies. And we're gonna cut them apart. Right. Uh, and start painting them separately. Yeah. So some of them need to be, I think this one's like a olive type color. Um, I can handle all the painting. I also do, do it fairly quickly. This little springy guy, see, it's like printed. It's printed yeah, I noticed spring. that one. So this is on the side of the hero panel. Oh, right. really? You know, it's like not, not a recent discovery, but like more recent than other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's probably where the problem is used to, like, to actually turn it on and off, and I don't, I don't know if the knobs. Oh, interesting. Fair enough. Are you okay with this kind of gray? Right. I am okay with yeah. that kind of gray. Totally. Yeah, I have no issues with that. Uh, these two get painted, but I don't remember what. So we gotta, right. we gotta find those. Um, so there's like a lot of stuff is in metal now. Right, right, right. Oh, paint. gotcha, so, gotcha. Okay, so cool. Like this used to paint. Oh, nice. I gotta check these. All right, colors. so I will hit these with some chromium now. Yeah, almost everything's metal now. Sorry, I thought the camera was rolling, but I painted it chrome. I use my standard trick of the Molto pen refill. That one, that's my favorite chrome. And then I'm back, I'm following that with... Um, all clad too, simply because I love how this coats it and it doesn't dull the chrome. Okay, so 
So yeah, if you put it in your palm and you do that. Much better. Yeah. Do you have any idea what these are? Because they look like pop tops. And people no, I, but like, clearly it's they? these, clearly it's from something, no idea. And where, as to where they would have found a bin full of them. Uh -huh. Remember, Empire is built in the in nineteen. Empire is done in eighty eighty one, in, in the Britain. UK. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have no, and no one's ever figured yeah. it out. And this is definitely a ridge. It's slanted. It's not. Wow. So it's like it's higher on one side than the other. So mine are two. But why? I don't and know. no one's found it on any other Star Wars pieces either. Not that I know of, but it's so hard to yeah, yeah so yeah, hard to yeah. check them all. Wow. Because rings and these cups, like, they're not as exciting. Yeah, as, and they're, I mean, you know, you can just make them. But, like, that's a really specific part that was made for something. Yeah. No clues. Nobody knows. That's far out. We originally thought the U -clip, these U-clips were, like, part of the bottle pen that, that helped it hold on to the car. Oh. But. Yeah, they could, they, like, a panel. Yeah, yeah panel catches. So we, so we called them clips for that reason, but... Now they're the heat sinks. Love the smell of the HP. Didn't notice yet. It's got a particular smell. Mm -hmm. Smells like something. Go. These all have VHB and they're ready to go. Great. I like using Han as a table while we're <laughs> assembling. You painted right over top of him, right? What's that? And you painted on top of him, right? Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. Yeah, it's, it's got good, it's tough coating. You have to go through a lot before you run into trouble. Um, this seems to be holding great. It doesn't seem like it's gonna wanna move at all. Great. Dual purpose glue. Holds the back in awesome. and the front on. Great. Great. Yeah, I love the mechanical connections. That's good. Every time I've done it, I put dots of glue on that. Oh, that. nice. <laughs> Screw it better. Um, one of these fell off because it hadn't, I hadn't, we hadn't glued it on. Nothing. Um, Let's. Drill. Do you want me to do that? Do, drill a little hole for where this goes. Oh, and it goes like in the middle right. Yeah. Um, this is panel two, yeah? So I had it up. Yeah. Wait, Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Here. Got it. Okay. Yep. Centered. Centered slightly to the left. Oh, right. And there's a big decal missing that used yeah, to be I, there. I have. Right, right. It's, it's not there. <laughs> That is a 440, so that's an eighth inch drill bit. What's the trick for taking this off? Uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so you end up going in with a blade yeah. and kind of getting it up. And then there's also uh, the this, the tweezer man tweezers will Grab that for you. Different than the other tweezers I have. They are, those are my favorites of all tweezers. Because they stay aligned over time? They stay aligned, but also they give the best gription right out to the tip. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's the hardest. It. I like it. I like it. Good. All right. And then, oh, right. Okay. So now I see that other little ring I've got. That goes here. And then, what is this? Is this a, oh, no, that's one of your little dots. Yeah, Those so are the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Separate that out. Got it. I mean, half the time Zagreebly goes in. Because the director of photography goes, can you break up that surface for me so I can see it? <laughs> and it's like that simple. 
I can't tell you how many things I painted to camera for a motion control shoot. You know, we set up the camera and then I'm literally airbrushing while looking at a monitor. Yeah, all the main parts of this are done. Um... bring in the other workbench and it gives us just a little more space to work. Oh, I like that. But that's not light. This is lit. Oh, oh, I've really diffused it to try and fill the whole block. Got it. So it looks like we uh, these off. Yep. I see. All behind this. Oh, so if you don't have that, what does it look? Can you show me what it looks like? It's just a beam. Isn't it? Great. Oh, um, it's probably some in between. Yeah. Just I feel like once you get it up there, you're not gonna mess with it for a couple years. No, and it's um. Well, so the thing is, is that what I've got is I've got yeah, I've got strip LEDs and I've got gels. So what I'm gonna have coming in here is 120, okay. and it'll go to that needs five, right? Yeah. And, and then, then so I'll run the other on 12 and blank them. Oh, does it blank it? Because this is like this part. Oh, oh, so the, the screen actually goes. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that and that changes based on these lights. So these are like different settings. Oh, neat. Them. Okay, I see, I and see. they're all like going based on. Hmm. I think this is on and off, and then this is different sequences. Gotcha. everything's done a couple still need a few more green leaves and stickers but uh you want to start handing me the ones that can be bolted yeah so this is we labeled them all on the back panel three yep yep panel three goes to that's like that and we just put the bolt here right oh that's very exciting okay I, uh, I torqued all these down just a little bit to get that little extra. Yeah, these wings can like flap out. Oh, too. I know. They each like, they yeah. pop out. It's kind of this neat extra feature. Dude. So there is something I wanted to, hang on. A little bit of dirt. Like, that's just super clean. Sure, yeah. You you see all sorts of rust and stuff on there and all the parts. Yeah, so I was thinking about taking little streaks and tips to this and then pulling it back off again. So I'm going to... Or you could just leave it in your shop for a while. It'll get dirty that way. Yeah, still need, still from a yeah. distance, that's drawing my eyes like a little overly clean. Yeah. What are you going to use to make it dusty? And dirty. So uh, this is uh, streaks and tips. This is a hairspray color. And it comes out as brown. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a couple of features. Uh, one is you can dust it and it's great. And it actually, uh, it's the primary weathering for like Star Wars droids on set. Because you can pull it back off with rubbing alcohol. So it ends up staying in the corners and kind of giving you the streaks and stuff. Great. Seems really useful for lots of projects. Yeah. And it is literally like, it's an on set. Oh, it's also, um, 
unreactive to heat. So I learned about this first from uh, gaffers, who if you were in somebody's house and their light bulb was too bright, you could replace it with a, you just spray it with this and pull its value down by like two or three shades. Um, you spray this right on a hot light bulb, just do it. This is the fun part. Just a little dusty. That's it. Just a little bit like that. Yes, yeah, just the value is killed just a tiny bit. Great. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. All the times builders keep trying to get it perfect, but then the Star Wars universe is not that way. This is the thing. It's like everyone's, I'm like, your R2 is way too clean. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, our, that one of the Hero 6 R2s has this actual giant dent in his head. And I remember when I was finishing mine, I got like, I ended up putting together like three eighths of an inch of leather, taping it to it and <laughs> smacking it with a ball peen hammer to get that. And yeah, I mean, you know, even just what I did of just like killing the 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 the, mo the monochrome value here just a tiny bit, like to me that adds it, it gives me a little bit more of that sort of variation I want. I guess I see something you did here. So kind of That's a little broad. broad, broad. Yeah, I think I overdid that just a tiniest bit. But um, yeah, it is like reality is way more. It's way less monochromatic. And I know, I see all these Star Wars props people doing them just way too clean. There's one scene in Empire, and this side lights up. Yeah. And at That's... first we thought that it moved the hero panel or mirrored it, but no, it's like an actual different panel they just made just for that shot. That's far out to me. I love that. And the actual Baba panel, the dashboard that you would read, you see from this side. So this is the back of the panel. Right. No, I know. I that I love the fact that you had uh, temp. Yeah. <laughs> the actual ink and things on the like side. Gas and temperature. Totally great. It's So a couple more here for panel four. Just one more time. The funny thing is when I weather like Imperial stuff and people are like, but Imperial stuff is really clean. And I'm like, clean is, clean is not clean when you think it is. Like too clean actually will take you out of the scale. Came with a jumper for that. Okay, so the last thing to do is that thing, huh? Yeah. Um, and it's always probably every time I build one of these. Really? I don't know so if I'm do it. I will tell you the one issue I have in the Star Wars universe with the cosplaying is that the like the segment are never bright enough. Uh -huh. It is the segment brightness is like it drives me crazy on the Mando and the Boba Fett costumes because uh -huh. the kids I buy come and they're like that bright and you can see on the show they're like. Ten times brighter, yeah. That's it's a. It's are they cheating? Like they're using spe uh, special effects? They no. I think they're actually. I, did they just have proper electronics that are making them as bright as they need them to be? Okay. On the originals, the seven seven displays like that didn't exist. They had Nixie tube displays. Are you kidding? There's a guy that sells those. <gasps> Jesus. He, he tracked what? down like the last box. Oh my god. It's three hundred dollars, but you don't even get a way to light them up because he's like, I don't know how to light these up. Right. The right ones. Wow. You need fancy different power, not not low voltage power. God, he looks good. Yeah. And look at the honestly, just the difference between that and that. Mm -hmm. You know, the it's gotten a little bit of blending and that one doesn't. Yeah. One of my favorite. I never tire of that. 
the subtle differences that make the subtle things that make huge differences. Yeah. Oh, right. That's got to go through here. Here, you want to come over and give me an extra? Hold that up, grab one screw in there, and then we're that's good. I'm about to power up USB. Yeah. And it's not plugged in yet, so USB now should be powered. lights came on okay. that's always positive um, so dude it is literally the hum and carbonate of my dreams oh wait I'm gonna do that uh, yep the nice thing is you come back here and you do it and you end up with what looks kind of like a burn you know just like a little bit of a slightly darker shade and it's just like, I see, I just look for shit that like, kind of like, oh yeah, let me just kill that up there a little bit. Dude, this is beautiful. Great. I love this. Um, I also, I didn't get to tell you, but assembling this box was a, just a pleasure. Yeah, I think you said that. Uh, the text was on there. It was, it was great. It went really fast. It was really nice and solid. Uh, it was square, and it's far out because there's no corners except down there. Yeah. There's no 90 degrees. Not square, but it's square, yeah. Yeah, but dude, that's stunning. And I love that it'll be up and blinking. Yeah. Like, that's the... And then the panels are all different. No, yeah. they're all the same. Oh, I'm sure people will come in. So soon, at some point, my panels will be part of the reference yeah. <laughs> library of the web, right? It's like every new pair. What's funny to me is that is it panel eight that there's almost nothing but a sign on the side of? Like, there's very few head-on shots of panel eight. It's four. Is it four? Bausch model. Like that costume is standing in the way. Yeah, um, I mean, oh, the Boosh? Boosh should be Boosh, Bausch. Boosh. Boosh. I thought it was Boosh. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she's in the way. So you don't get a straight shot. He's quite safe. <laughs> Does it uh, does it give you a new thrill each time to see one of these completed? Yeah, but what always happens is it's gone right away. <laughs> <laughs> the thrill? No, 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 no. Oh. The, the, mo the model, right? Like this time, I'm leaving. Yes, like, <laughs> the guy's coming to pick it up. I gotta finish. This looks fantastic. I'm so happy. 